It's O-Dark 30, and we're already on the road, heading to a place north of here by about two and a half hours, where a gentleman has got buildings full of cars that are unbelievable. He said, I bought them because I love them, not because they were gonna go up in value. Well, they all went up in value. And so now we've been invited to see buildings full of cars that he restored 20, 30, 40 years ago, and now they're sitting in those buildings kind of unrestoring themselves. It's, it's a pretty sad sight, but the cars are amazing. So come along for the ride. Oh, it's a barn find guy doing with flowers. Oh, I like flowers, okay? Oh, actually, we're going to see a guy named Billy who's got an amazing selection of cars, and he happened to tell me that today is his wife Carol Lee's birthday. So, bought Carolina some flowers. This is what you do to be a successful barn find hunter. Sometimes it takes buying a bouquet of flowers. Remember what I told you in the past about dead end roads? These are the roads that contain the treasures that nobody's, nobody wants to go down a dead end road. Well, this is where the treasures are. So this is the perfect case in point for going down dead end roads. Here we go. Buildings folded. Here we go. Billy and Carolee. This is why the ladies love me. Oh, hi. Thank you. They're beautiful. Happy birthday, Carolee. Carolee, thank you yep. very much. <laughs> so, Billy, what's your dad's name? Walter Bickett Eubanks. Walter, okay. Just nice call him to, Bickett. Nice to meet you, Bickett. And thanks for teaching this guy about car stuff. Well, where do we start? Which which room do we start in? Over here? Over here? Well, uh, you probably since we're in here and it's raining, let's look at the. Uh, <laughs> okay. Look, you go in and look at the Lincoln and the Stutz. Now they're dirty. I had to clean them up. Good. We don't want them clean. Had a lot of fast cars and uh, and and drove fast a lot, but I never had a ticket. Never got it. Never had a ticket. Man. And this is a 1929 Stutz, overhead cam. Shaft, vertical. vertical engine. Now, how long have you had something like this? It's been several years. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, that's then, old 40, that's a 1940. 1940 Lincoln Continental. Yeah, now the, the, the 41, they had two-piece fenders, but the 41s were two pieces stamped out. The, the 40s, the back half of that fender was handmade. Handmade. With six slits in the back fenders to make that turn. Oh, man. I, when I first cleaned the paint off, I said, well, somebody has homemade a fender on this thing. It's been torn all to pieces. But I, well, I went to the show. When I went and got that Lincoln uh, Ford Motor Company trophy, they said that Lincoln handmade those fenders. And I had the only Lincoln there. There were six Lincolns, four, maybe four, four or six, four is there at the show. And I was the only one that had the, the homemade fender skirts on it. And, and this was basically a handmade car? Yeah. Wow. That whole back end is handmade. Are there cars back here too? The cars are in there, the other side. Okay, now we'll get into some stuff here. Wow. All right, so even though you're a Mopar guy and a Hudson guy, I mean, you've got Chevrolets. Do you remember any stories about any of these cars, about how you, who you got them from or anything? I was working at the Chevrolet dealership when this car got traded in. It got stolen one time. You know, they got a switch on it. She, Mama drove it to work one night and they, she didn't get the switch cut off right and somebody stole it. It upset me so bad. I prayed to the Lord that he'd give it back to me by the weekend or either give me the understanding to handle that problem, not let it worry me to death. Wow. But that, uh, that Friday night, the law from down nearby town said he had a Corvette registered to me that we could come get it, that he had, they had got it out in the woods and it won't hurt, except he said it didn't half run. But what the people had done, they jerked it so hard they pulled three spark plug wires off from the left side when it broke the motor mount. Oh, and it, uh, doing a burnout? Yeah. Oh. So I went down and got it and uh, drove it home on five cylinders. <laughs> I didn't know why. I didn't know why it was running bad. I was sure. just able to get it back. Now that's an intriguing car right there, a Daytona. What, what's the story with that car? If you do look back in the history of these Dodges, when they started building them, 
they had a wide wing on the back. I don't know whether you ever seen a picture of one with a wider wing. A wider one. A wider wing. I might have one. I have gotten one somewhere. But anyway, there's a set of holes in this car right out here. You can see on the inside. Oh, you really? feel it where they welded them up. Yeah. They put the regular wing back on it. Mm -hmm. But they did some testing with them on the outside with the wing out flush. And this was that car. I joined the Daytona Superbird Club and not many of them had clear windows in them. This one's got all clear glass in it. No power steering, no power brakes. Hmm. It's just a, it was a 444 speed. So 444 speed, single four barrel? Yeah. Well, it's got two on it now. Two, yeah. It has two on it when I got it, but uh -huh. it didn't come that way, I don't think. And did, did you drive this car much? I had driven it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I drove it. It really had no value then, did it? No. What, what do, you, do you remember what you paid for it? No. Now here's a 446 pack charger. That's a R, it's a RT, but I painted, I took the decals off. Uh-huh, and that's an automatic car. Boy, look at that air cleaner. Whoa, so you got, you got three two barrels underneath there. You do nice paint jobs, I gotta tell you that. So what cars are interesting in here? All right, so here we have two rare Fords. Uh, that's a Torino Talladega. Yeah. Is that a 70? 69. 69. Now, some that's, of these had big motors. Does that have a 420? Well, they all had the same motor in them. This is a 428. Uh, 428 Cobra Jet? So that's a single four barrel 428. Yeah. I need the oil that hood. Yeah. See, this was an extended nose that Ford put on a standard Torino. It's about three inches longer, maybe maybe longer than that. Holman and Moody and Ford Motor Company got together and designed a car with a snoopy nose, a sloopy nose, to keep it down at tracks like Talladega so that the front end wouldn't come up in the air. Okay, the Mercury Cyclone. That's the Dan Gurney Special. The Mercury was tagged Dan Gurney Special. The Mercury is a lot rarer than the Ford. They made 700 Fords. They claim they made 500 Mercury's, but I think they made about 275. No kidding. Is that an automatic car? Yeah. This is a 302 in here? No, it's a three, 351. 351, I think. Okay. What an intriguing co uh, you know, package deal here with these two cars. Wow. Nice. That's yeah. a 57 Chevy Nomad. Mm hmm. 57 Chevy Nomad. Anything unusual about this engine? It's a 283? Yeah, but it's, uh, it's just a Nomad. So no fuel injection or anything like that? That's a manual gearbox, three on the tree. That's a Mark II. That's, that was the most expensive car. In fact, Ford charged so much money, and yet they still lost money on every car. So it's a Hudson Hornet Coupe. Oh, you have a Rolls Royce. It's a special car. Uh, here we have another Chrysler 300. Another big Hemi with two four barrels. Boy, that's some rare stuff here. 427 uh, Chevy Impala convertible. It's automatic console, bucket seats. I can't imagine the torque that that car had. 58 Chrysler Imperial. And so did you did you drive this car to high school? I drove it to high school, yeah. This was your high school car? Wow. So a 55 four-door. It's got 30, 36,000 miles on it. No kidding. Yeah. All right, more cars. How do you like that? This is amazing that we're walking by cars that on a normal episode, we would spend a half hour looking at that car, salivating over it, if we found it in Northern California or Texas. Wow, look at that 55, it's great. But here, there's so many ca other cars that are around it, I, I feel guilty about not paying attention and giving credit to these cars. Oh, a nice Jaguar. Well, you didn't know you'd be pressed into service today. No, right? I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> On your birthday. Right. <laughs>
Now Billy's uh, knee has taken him out of service for a little while. He's got a bad knee. So Carol Lee, on her birthday, has volunteered to walk, walk us through these buildings. Volunteered might be a little <laughs> bit of an... <laughs> so here you got turbojet 360 horsepower. That's a big block. You can tell by the valve covers. That's a factory big block 427. So we've seen two of those so far. Red convertible and this, I guess it's a black or dark blue convertible. Have you, uh, maybe you're going to find cars you've never knew you had. Pro that's very possible. <laughs> we have over a hundred. No kidding. My grandchildren went around and counted them one day, and we've got a bunch. They're not all fixed up, I but yeah. the woods are full. <laughs> it's been quite his life work. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? So this is a Z28. Yeah. So, I don't know, it's probably a 70 or... So this is a, a, a Chrysler, probably a 50... Seven Chrysler, I'm guessing by the. He liked he liked the Chryslers and he liked he he really liked the old cars that every year we got real excited about the models coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Now this I know is a Lincoln Cosmopolitan. To my knowledge, a, the Continental was not a Lincoln Continental. It was a Continental made by Lincoln, but this is a Lincoln Cos Cosmopolitan, so it, it's got both names on the fender. And I think this was the lower price Lincoln, if I'm not mistaken. It was. Uh, based on a kind of a, a mercury size car. Well, when Billy first started collecting, he was more into the old Lincolns. He, he liked the old Lincolns. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we first got married, he, didn't, he only had a car or two. <laughs> and then after our daughter was born, I was in the hospital and he came and he said, get up and look out the window. He was just grinning from ear to ear. I thought he was so happy about our little girl. But he bought another car and he had it parked outside the hospital and wanted me to see it. And my life has been like that forevermore. <laughs> oh man, you can't make that up. This is the car he wanted me to tell you about. Oh, okay. This was a car that he restored. We have showed a few cars, but Billy just enjoys fixing them. He's not that much into competing. Mm -hmm. But we went to uh, Gatlinburg, we called this one to Gatlinburg, when my daughter, older daughter was about 15. Billy registered the car in her name because he didn't want to go to the banquet. Huh. He wanted to stay out and swap car parts with all the other nuts. <laughs> so Tammy and I went into the banquet and we, you know, they gave out all the little trophies and Tammy was kind of disappointed. She thought her daddy'd like a trophy. And then they got to this big one and they said, Tommy Eubanks. Well, it was Tammy Eubanks. And that child got up and got that trophy so fast I couldn't even get a picture. Isn't that She something? was up and back in her seat wanting to run out and tell her daddy. So this one, best to show. Yeah, it did. And it was a... Oh, here which he is. Which was still a bargain. We're hearing all the, all the stories here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here we have a Studebaker. So here's a supercharger. It's belt driven off the, the crankshaft and drives air through that hose and down a carburetor, uh, the carburetor being in here. So it's a blow through supercharger. So look at this, you have an alternator. So you got a supercharger here driven by the belt and spring loaded so it's, it's got tension. You see that arm moves back and forth. Here's an alternator. It probably would have been a generator on here originally. And then here's a uh, air conditioning unit. A lot going on with belts here. This was a 289 engine, just, this is a 289 cubic inch Studebaker motor, not a Ford engine. So here's another Dodge Daytona. Most of these streetcars were purchased, again, we'll bring up the word homologation. Chrysler had to build a certain number of cars, whether it was a Dodge or a Plymouth, to qualify the car, homologated for NASCAR racing. Bill France wouldn't allow somebody to build a custom car, bring it on the track. Remember, these are called stock cars. They're supposed to represent what people drove on the street. So Chrysler came out with uh, a limited production car that people could buy, but they weren't necessarily modified very much. They had a 440, lots of them had automatics. They had this wing and they had a, a nose, a, a, a sloopy nose on there, but they weren't really modified cars. But some people took those cars and modified them. And this is one of those cars. These cars either came, mostly came with 440s in them. I think some had maybe 383s. I don't know what this car had in it. Probably a 440 originally, but this one now has a 426 Hemi in it. It's got really huge wheels and tires in the back. 
and skinnier ones in the front. So I take it this was a drag car at one time. Billy told us that the previous owner of this car brought it to a test track, Chrysler Proving Ground, I think in Highland Park or something, and uh, ran it, and this car went to 190 miles an hour. That's for a street-driven car, which is amazing. It's got a, a four-speed pistol grid shifter, um, you know, a couple of gauges that were added, a uh, oil pressure gauge, a sun tack, but the real modifications are up in the front here. This car most likely came with a 440, but this one has a 426 Hemi engine and two four barrels on a high-rise intake manifold, and there's a, a big hole cut in the hood here. So let me just put this hood down for a, a half a second if we can. As you can see, those carburetors are going to come right out the top. So this was a very modified car, and I take it that this car was a, uh, a drag car that probably was, uh, you know, drag raced um, back in the day. Uh, very modified. Who knows what the horsepower is of that thing? Probably, you know, 600. Who knows? Maybe more. We don't know if it's bored and stroked. NASCAR wouldn't allow a high-rise manifold like that. You had to have the carburetors under the hood. So that's why I say this was either a street car, a street race car, or a drag car. Here we are in rural North Carolina looking at a pretty substantial piece of history here. A 1970 Plymouth Superbird, the 43rd Superbird made, same number as Richard Petty's, uh, famous race number. I just want to let you know the value of this. I'm going through the Haggerty price guide, and in number four condition, this has a value of $91,000. The average condition, or one in good condition, is $124,000. If it were excellent, it'd be $169,000, and in concourse condition, $216,000. Well, what condition is this in? It hasn't been started in a long time, it's dirty, but I, I guarantee that this car would drive, run and drive, and be cleaned up to probably something of concourse condition or greater because it's better than concourse condition. It's got original paint, never been repainted. It's got the original interior, it's got the original drivetrain, and it's the 43rd made. So this car has a value well in the $200,000 range, I, I would say, according to the history of these cars being sold. Another Hudson Hornet. Now that's a significant car, 59 Cadillac. Yeah. Is it a Biarritz or Eldorado? I think it's a Biarritz Eldorado. Yeah. You know, I can't imagine what a car like this is worth. Uh, Box is blocking the way, but just look at the size of this. Right? The weight's probably it's got to be five, six thousand pounds. Now, I mean, this is the most obscene, you know, tail light ever known to, to man. It was 1959. Cadillac came out with the fin and the tail lights. Uh, just amazing piece of artwork. You want to see the Godfather? Oh yeah, this is it right here. Yeah. Huh. Okay, another piece of history here. 41 Lincoln Continental. This car appeared in the Godfather movie, and you can see it's got bullet holes throughout. This was an actual movie car. Wow, look at this, it's a sign. Actual 45 caliber bullets were fired into this special effects car from a Thompson machine gun from the death scene in the movie The Godfather. So this is a Hollywood star of sorts. But this, this car here, we should, we should look at this car for a little bit. It's not even really even car, it's, a, it's, a, it's not really a truck. It's called a Ute. Can you spell that U-T-E? Made in Australia by Chrysler Car Company. I think it's a Plymouth, if I'm not mistaken. So this is probably a 56, 57 with the big fin here. Wayfarer Chrysler. So as you see, it has a tailgate. And I'm not sure if they were built in Australia for tax reasons. I, I don't know why they were built, but they were still built building utes, you know, until just not too many years ago. So Airflow Chrysler, you know, I love them, but apparently they didn't sell very well. If you look at this 35 and any other car, Chevrolet or Ford, they were so much more primitive. If you look at this car, it's got aerodynamics. The headlights are built into the body, not separate sitting up here. And it was designed with the idea of getting better uh, fuel economy and speed 
from a car that was designed differently than the, the normal car of the day was. It, it never caught on and it didn't, it didn't sell very well. Now this is the car I've been dying to see. So this was a, what year is it? 57. D500. Tell us, Billy, is this, this is a car you've had since new? We bought it, Daddy bought it new, and I've traded back for it a time or two. We got, I'm going to keep it this time. <laughs> <laughs> and so this was a Dodge that came with a Hemi engine equipped like you would build like a NASCAR stock car out of back in the day when they were stock cars. It's got a Hemi engine with a four barrel carburetor. Did you drive this to high school, Billy? Yeah. So is that like a 274 or oh, no, something? it's a three something, 315 maybe. 315. It's a smaller engine than a Chrysler had. Dodgers had smaller engines. But it was still a Hemi. Still a Hemi, right. And it had a, a manual transmission. Yeah. Right? Pretty car. Had a lot of chrome on it. Boy, and he bought this new. Whoa. So you told me he ordered it once and it came in wrong? Yeah. And it was just like he ordered. The colors were reversed. The... Uh, it had automatic in it with the twin four barrels. So his dad ordered one from a local dealer. Come it, wrong. It had two four barrels and a Hemi, but it had an automatic, and his dad wanted a standard. So they went to another dealership and ordered one with a manual transmission. It came with one four barrel, which is fine, I guess. Yeah, it would fly. Yeah, I bet. Wow. How fast have you had this up to? you remember? It didn't have the speed much... It didn't seem like it wanted to run fast as that Imperial over there. Is that right? But the Imperial had a 392 in it. But this would turn tight, but yeah. it just wouldn't. So is this original paint on here? No. no. That's some of my work. And those are the original hubcaps on there. Yeah. And that was a very limited production car, I bet. Yeah, but they had one a little rarer than that. And I, we didn't know about it, but you could get it with the uh, 392 in it. Ooh, wow. That's a rare car, boy. That's a beauty, too. Let's walk out the store right here. Some more junk down there. <laughs> you like junk. Oh, I love junk. You know, I see a couple of iconic 1960s cars, Old Tornado and a Buick Riviera, and both cars uh, are now seen as classics, American classic cars, because they were so breathtaking and cutting edge in their styling, and in this case, front wheel drive. Like, who heard of that? The front wheel drive at that point was sobs, and Oldsmobile did it with a huge Tornado. Uh -huh. Wow. And open the door then just look inside at how nice it is. It's got 49,000 actual miles. How many? 49. 49 miles. 49,000. Oh, 49,000. Okay. Wow. It's beautiful. So there's a 318. Look how clean the fender walls are, the firewall. That could be a nice car, boy. Whew. I got two old Chevrolets in here, but Oh, another no two more nomads. Oh! Jeez. <laughs> too many toys. Okay, so this is the car that Billy told us about. And this is a rare, rare car. A 1968 Corvette, 427, 435 horsepower. So it was the highest horsepower Corvette. Tri-power, okay, that's a rare option in itself, okay? Four speed, air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, side exhaust, original from the factory. Uh, it's gotta be one of the rarest Corvettes of this era. It's uh, metallic blue with, it looks like dark brown or maybe black interior. So this was the highest horsepower car with all the options you could get. So somebody was you know, a well-heeled person who bought this car. They wanted power, but they wanted luxury. Factory air, oh, amazing. So have you ever seen another one optioned like this? No, have you? No, power steering, power brakes, air conditioning, side exhaust, high horsepower. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, it's a 400 horse. 400, okay, so it's not 435. No, okay. they didn't make it that way. Ah, okay. They, you, either, you could either have 435 or you could have air conditioning, but it was got a it. different cam. Okay, got it. How you can have cars like this and never having had a speeding ticket, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, so here's a sweetheart, a 57 Corvette. So that's a four-speed car, uh, 
283. Is this the one you'd like to put the fuel injection on maybe? Maybe. Yeah. Okay, and then here we have another wing car, another Dodge Daytona. That's got the fast front on it. Oh. So it's a real Daytona. It's got the double X serial number. Mm-hmm. That's why they had to put, uh, you know, all those templates on the cars now before they race them. I got that front end and it, I put the hood on it and uh, the, the thing was three quarters of an inch long on the right side. On purpose? Yeah. Ho! Oh. All right, so what Billy's telling us, this, this is the era when NASCAR started to require templates before cars could go through tech inspection because they were being built strangely. And uh, Billy said the and right side of this car is three longer. quarters of an inch longer than the left side. And he knows that because he had to do front end repairs. I had to work the hood over. So this nose was actually purchased from Harry Hyde. And this, this was on uh, uh, an actual NASCAR race car that uh, Bobby Isaac drove. What motor's in this? It has got a red hot 440 in it. <laughs> oh, it's, it, it has to, it's got so much cam, the power brakes won't work. Jeez. So that's not really a street car. There's no headlights, no. right? XX, the first two numbers in, in the VIN, indicate that it's a, a genuine Daytona. What year is it, 69? Mm-hmm. So all Superbirds were 70s and all Daytonas were 69s, okay. So it's got automatic. I wouldn't have any miles around this thing. 73,206 miles. So you got this whole this whole nose from Harry? Uh, yeah. So this is except for the hood. Okay. So I wonder what what was here with this plate. I is. think they had a place they could put oil in it. Oh yeah, they had the over, overflow tanks or the, the sump tanks here, I guess. Huh. Pretty neat. We have a Super B, and let's see what's under the hood. Four twenty six Hemi. <laughs> okay, this is a hot rod then. Let's bring that flashlight up again. Four twenty six Hemi head. And who knows what the horsepower is in that thing? Probably at least five hundred. This had to have been restored. I mean, the paint under this hood is just perfect. So this car has Super B on it, but it didn't. It wasn't born as a Super B. This was born as a Coronet. And it was born with a 318 cubic inch engine. Now it has a Hemi. So it's a bit of a hot rod. So it's got low mileage, only 47,000 miles. What's it worth? It's probably worth in the, I don't know, I'd say in the 40s maybe, because for all practical purposes, it is a Super B, but it, it was just born as a Coronet. I need a car. And it shows me that, you know, Billy's into hot rodding because most likely he built this because he, he was able to find a really solid Coronet and it was hard to find a Super B. All right, now we're in the downstairs of this building. <laughs> so just more cars of Billy's uh, eclectic taste. Uh, another Chrysler 300 next to a Jaguar XJ12L. Uh, 58 Chevys, you know, I, for a long time I walked past 58 Chevys looking for 57 Chevys and 55 Chevys. 56 Chevys, but now 58 Chevys have kind of come onto their own. Oh boy, fun never stops. This is your Ford building? Oh, you got a Corvette, Corvette, Corvette. No, it's not all Fords. Okay, so we have three 57 Thunderbirds, which all three of them have chrome wire wheels, which was an option. Now this is the rare one of the three, the red one. And Billy told me that's got two four barrels, factory two four. So this is called an E-code. This is a T-Bird with an E-code motor, two four barrels. Also, very unusual for a T-Bird, is that it's got a manual transmission, a three-speed on the floor. Oh, plus overdrive, okay, three-speed three plus overdrive. White interior, white top, red body, chrome wire wheels, big motor, standard transmission. Nice, nice little package here. 54 Corvette. Now, if if you know about Corvettes, well, if you don't, I'll tell you about it. 53, first year of the Corvette, five west body, and 54. Those two years, it was a, uh, it was called a Blue Flame 6. You couldn't get a V8 in a Corvette in those days. And, and the reason they, they, 
developed a car like this is because Jaguar was the sportiest car of the day. And Jaguars had a six cylinder motor and they handled well and they performed well and they raced well. And Corvette came out with their own version of a Jaguar, which was the Corvette. Instead of a steel body, it had a fiberglass body. But the, the problem was they used production parts they had for sedans. And uh, so it didn't quite have the same lineage as a Jaguar did. So it had a, a six cylinder overhead valve motor with three carburetors on it because Jaguars also had multiple carburetors. This had three Rochester side drafts, I think. Also, for the first two years, you couldn't get a standard transmission. It was only available with a power glide automatic. So uh, some of these were raced, some were road raced, uh, not a lot of them, they didn't do particularly well. But over the next couple of years, Corvettes started to come on their own. They added a, four, a three speed and a four speed and a V8 engine. And, and ultimately, when you got to a Stingray, independent suspension. Um, so, but this is where it started. And thankfully, they didn't end production on the Corvette because, as we know, it's one of the most successful sports cars in the world. We've seen a couple of Corvettes already. This is, I think, the fourth vet we've seen. This one's been off the road since 1988. In 67, the highest horsepower car you get was an L88 427, but they're rarer than hen's teeth. They only made a few of them. So this was the highest horsepower production car you could really get. This car's got a big block with three two barrels, tri-power. Uh, it's got side exhaust. It's a four-speed. And uh, it's a sweet car. I mean, I can't imagine how good this car would sound if started up. My goodness. So this is a 1980 Corvette that Billy bought new. He had to order it. it took a long time to get. It had angle port heads. Uh, it had a four-bolt main. So even though it wasn't a high horsepower, because back in 80, you know, cars didn't have a lot of horsepower back then. This was a, a, a pretty special car. You still got plastic on the seats. Man, look at that. It's an automatic. Let's see what the, the mileage is on this. Whoa! Is that the real mileage? Yeah. 9.2 miles. Ha! <laughs> wow. Man. So how does it run? <laughs> you know, think about that car next to us, which is uh, before the pollution standards were put in place, 435 horsepower, probably underrated, probably 500 horsepower, okay? For insurance reasons, 435. Tonight, that's 67. To 1980, 220 horsepower. Uh, I, I drive a Mini Cooper that's got 210 horsepower, so it doesn't seem fair that a Corvette only had that much horsepower, but. You know, they were a comfortable, nice driving car, and they just didn't have a lot of horsepower at the time, but it was the best car you could get in America in that time. And now we're, now we're coming to <laughs> probably the last car. Pantera was built by Di Tommaso with a Ford motor, and it was, yeah, it was, it was a car that you could buy at a Lincoln dealership. Ford, at the time, had lots of high-performance cars, Boss 429s and Boss 302s, and they had just come through the Cobra era. This was one chance that Mercury had to get in the high performance sports car business as well. So the Pantera was sold through Lincoln dealerships in the day. It had a 351 Cleveland motor, but this was the, the, the original Pantera, which had the small fenders, not those big flares and wings. This was a pure sports car. I wonder how many miles are on this. Probably not a lot, huh? 14,532 miles. Wow. All right, so we've seen building on top of building, car on top of car. I thought I'd seen all the cars. I've, I've found my favorite car of the whole collection. It's a Jaguar XK120 Coupe. And you can't really see it here, but it's dark blue and it's got brown interior. As Billy told me, the interior is, except for the one seat bottom, the interior is original. What a beautiful, beautiful car. We saw an XK140 earlier, which has a longer roof. And for a guy like me, better leg room. But this is the more pure design with the short roof and the long hood. So if Billy said take one home, that would be it right here. Okay. Follow this man. Oh, we haven't seen all the buildings yet. All right, this is going to be the most mammoth impressive car you've ever seen. 59 Cadillac Eldorado Beeritz. My goodness. Factory bucket seats. Factory bucket seats. 
I didn't know there was bucket seats in 59. Man. And tri-power. Is that a 472 or something in there? Oh, I can't remember what it is. What a mammoth car. My goodness. We looked this car up on the Haggerty Price Guide, and it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, in, in fair condition, which is a number four condition, $101,000. In good condition, which is what most of them are, is $133,000. In excellent condition, one hundred eighty grand. And in concourse condition, $260,000. So we're looking at a car here that uh, has a value greater than the Superbirds we saw in the other buildings. You know what? Cleaned up, I'd say this is probably a concourse car. So we're, we're looking at a car worth a quarter of a million dollars. Just amazing. We've been here for hours and hours and hours looking at what I think is probably the finest collection of unknown cars that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and just when we thought there was no more buildings to see, Billy invites us inside to see, oh, there's another building here, and there's a 59 Cadillac Bia Ritz convertible that's like a, a, a piece of sculpture. Um, bright red, something that Elvis Presley would have driven, or Lucille Ball, or somebody like that. It, it's been an, an amazing day here in the woods. Uh, I'm glad we were able to share it with you because it's a very private collection and uh, not too many people know about this. But uh, we will give them permission by the owner to come here respectfully and tour it. Nothing's for sale, so don't even bother asking. Um, but uh, it, it's just one, one special man who has collected a series of special cars during his life. Uh, he bought them when they were cheap and kept them because he loved them, not because they were worth a lot of money. And now they are worth a lot of money. Happy hunting. So, 59 Ford Convertible, 58 Chevy uh, Impala Tudor Hardtop. A Studebaker, oh, a custom Studebaker, look at that. Huh. Uh, a couple of Eldorados, 